Hi, I'm Madeline James, and welcome to my world building guide series for creating an Earth-like fantasy world. As a disclaimer, if you are looking to build a world in a couple of hours, this guide is not for you. If you're looking for a good value between time spent and realism in your fantasy world, this guide is probably not for you either. <laughs> this guide is going to go way more in depth than is strictly necessary. If you want your world and your people to slowly come alive as you mold your world, then this guide might be for you. I started this series as a blog on my website, and I found that blogging really isn't my thing, but I'm going to try to keep the blog up to date with this series as we go along. And I will also try to link the relevant posts with each video, and that is also where I'll have all the different references and resources that I use in the videos um, linked in those blogs below. But let's go ahead and get started with the first video in this series, land masses and plate tectonics. You can either start with land masses or with plate tectonics. Plate tectonics is decidedly the most scientific way to go, but it involves things like fractal methods and special algorithms, and it's a little bit too complicated even for this guide. I also normally have a general idea of some of the land masses or the areas that I want created for the story I'm imagining in the world. Um, so it's a lot easier for me to start with the land masses. I do have some references on my blog if you want to start with plate tectonics. Um, so you can go ahead and follow those and then jump back in once we have a rough map, but good luck if you want to do that. Alright, so starting with land masses, we have to start with a rough map. And this is still going to be pretty flexible right now, we'll tweak and change it as we go along. But right now we just need to pick a method for coming up with those basic landmass shapes and there's a lot of options you can go with. You can crumple leaves, I think there's ones where you like drink a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and look at the like grinds in the bottom or something. There are generators, you can freehand it, whatever you like really. We're going to go with the fun approach where we find an island on the map, um, of the you know global earth map, just a small island and you blow it up and then we're going to cut it up into pieces and then all of those little pieces will kind of move around to create the different continents. So it's sort of like we use the island as the uh, supercontinent, like say Pangea for Earth, and then kind of move them around. And those movements is also going to help us figure out what those plate tectonics would be. And this is just a quicker, easier way to do it, in my opinion, that still feels realistic. Before we actually get started with that, though, I want to give you a couple of notes just to keep in mind while you're doing this. First, avoid having large land separating your northern and southern hemispheres or in general dividing any of your major oceans. If you have large bodies of, you know, your oceans separated like this, it'll impact ocean circulation a lot, which is going to cause a lot of problems for our climate modeling and will not be very accurate down the line. Second, try to stay close to Earth's uh, land water proportions. I think it's about 71% water to 29% land. So try to aim for 50 to 25% land on your map. And three, depending on which method you're going with, if you're freehanding or using a generator or something, try to find maps or make a map where some of the coastlines look mirrored as if the continents were sort of fitted together before, or just generally keep in mind plate tectonic movements of these chunks of continent. But with that, we are going to get started. We're going to pick a fun island then we are going to draw out our map, cut out the pieces, move it around, and go from there. Okay, so I have my maps app open. I'm just going to pick somewhere random, like, let's go up into Canada and lock in on one of these. Maybe this island's kind of boring. <laughs> Let's do this one, Amund Ringnes Island. So I'm just going to kind of roughly sketch this out on this piece of paper. Thank you. 
All right, so now we're just going to cut uh, your supercontinent into all of your little subcontinental pieces, but first I'm going to do something a little weird here, mostly just like as a, bo a bonus, I guess. Um, so this is representing the last supercontinent on our planet. The, when this formed before, all of these plates and continental crust would have been, you know, colliding. So you would expect to see some form of mountain ranges. So I'm going to put on here a really old mountain range that you will still see the remnants of slightly on our later map. Um, and I'm mostly just doing this because I uh, think it would be fun. So I'm just kind of, like maybe this was a major place that this was combined before. And keep in mind, some of these plates would have still been the same plates, but some of them would have been different. Plates change over time. So we're going to say, like, maybe like that. So then I'm going to finish cutting this up. So for here, from here, I have all of my land masses. So I'm going to want to take another piece of paper and sort of prep my global map. So let's do, I'll do this more like precisely at some point, but we just need something to get us going. Alright, so. Keep in mind, I did say to keep this to be about 50%, so I may shrink some of these as I'm tracing them out, because this is might end up being a little bit more than I was hoping for, but that's okay. I may also have just messed this up a little bit, so. So basically, you have this subcontinent. It doesn't matter how, where you lay it out, just that it's all in this shape. And then you're going to want to kind of like move these apart and rotate them in certain directions. And whichever way you move and rotate them, mark on um, the piece, like how far apart it's moved, how much it's rotated. So if I want this piece to move and go like maybe like this, right? So that basically went like that, right? That's the direction that it moved from here. So maybe this one is going to move... like that. They're going to overlap a little bit and that's fine. These are sort of creating, well actually you know what, I'm going to push this up. Yeah. Mostly because this is going to make it a little bit more interesting, um, having things at different levels. So yeah, I think this is my map. And again, I'll sort of shrink it slightly, but... And then you would have bigger mountain ranges along here and combined along the bottom. Not that this is really going to matter because this is going to be covered in ice, but eh. Cool. And there are my land masses. All right, and now we need to add the plate boundaries to our map. And these are essentially the possible plate boundaries, or you know, different plates that would have created the land masses that we've come up so come up with so far. We do have a lot of flexibility here, um, and to some extent, a lot of this doesn't really matter. Um, but you're going to want to aim for about maybe six to ten larger plates, and maybe half that many smaller ones. You can have oceanic only plates, but not continental only ones because of how you know the edges of crust is formed you also don't want to have multiple separate land masses on the same plate once we have these plate boundaries mapped out we can go in and make sure we indicate directionality a lot of this directionality is going to come from if you did the island method like me how you move those pieces 
Um, but basically they can just move around however you want. All crust is moving on the Earth's mantle or your planet's mantle. But we are mostly concerned here with how the plates are moving in direction to each other. So they can be spinning, they can be moving in some direction. Uh, the way that they're moving in direction to the plate above them and the, the plate like below them, if you're looking south-north or something, it doesn't need to be the same. It can be moving towards both the plate above it and the plate below it at the same time if both of those plates are moving towards it, right? It could be being subducted on all sides by those other plates. If you started with your plate tectonics, then you already have all this figured out. And if you went the island method, this is also going to be pretty easy. Um, if you did another method, just kind of do the best you can. It's not going to matter too, too, too much. Um, but before we get started on that, I'm going to go through like, I guess a brief little science lesson on what plate tectonics are. And I'll put that up on the page so that you can read it before we get started. Two landforms that were once one land mass will be separated by oceanic crust and a divergent plate boundary. So if you had started with a supercontinent and they all moved apart, you're mostly going to have divergent boundaries in the center there. Another important thing to note is continental crust is rarely created or destroyed, so for the most part that's going to stay the same. Glaciation will affect this, um, rising and lowering sea levels will affect this, and a small amount of erosion. But for the most part, at this scale, your land masses are going to be the same. You're mostly going to see oceanic crust, being created or destroyed around these borders or boundaries. Another thing to note here, again, is if you started with a supercontinent um, and they're diverging from the center, that means there's a lot of crust being destroyed on the opposite side of the globe. And these oceanic plates are probably being subducted under the uh, other plates that are moving around towards them. Here's a quick little graphic just of some notes to make this slightly easier. If you have a mountain range along the edge of a continent, a convergent plate boundary will likely be right off the coast. If you want a particularly large mountain range in the middle of a continent, that is probably a convergent plate boundary. A particularly jagged or sharp edge could be a transform boundary. Most likely all of your transform boundaries should occur between the same types of crusts, so you won't have oceanic and continental crusts at a transform boundary. And between two convergent boundaries, there is probably a divergent one, but not necessarily. One last thing to note about creating these plate boundaries is that these plates are not static. They grow, they shrink over time, you can have new plate divisions come up, you can have some of them shrink, and in all of these plates are some smaller ones, especially around the edges. But I think if you were to map out all the plates on the entire Earth's crust, there are a ton of them. I'd have to look it up, but it's a lot. Part of these plate boundaries changing is that there could be mountains on your map that aren't necessarily a part of a, you know, current divergent plate boundary. These could be from previous divisions. An example of this is in North America. For the most part, um, all of North America is on the North American plate, and the Appalachian Mountains are not a part of a current active plate boundary. The Appalachians were formed a few hundred million years ago when the continents collided into Pangaea. And so they've been eroding for a long time, and that's why they're not as, um, I guess, severe. In contrast, the Rockies on the more western coast were formed by the active plate boundary as the oceanic crust off the uh, west coast of North America subducted, and it was a, I guess, a shallow abduction angle. So you see the Rocky Mountains kind of further away from the crust, whereas like in South America, where the oceanic crust is subducting under that plate, it's a very um, steep angle. So you will see more um, steep, not as far away from the coast, mountain ranges there rising up. The shallow subduction range there um, in the Rockies, the boundary that used to be a convergent one um, with subduction off the, I guess, western coast of North America, uh, that created those mountains is now mostly a transform boundary. So these things change as the plates move differently, so it doesn't all need to map exactly based off what it looks like it's doing right now, right? Because there are millions and millions and hundreds of millions of years of history that shaped these land masses. Okay, so I've selected a new color for my plate boundaries, and I'm going to kind of just mark out the pieces that I know um, based off how these were split up, right? So. The center of the map is going to be where a lot of these moved from, so there's going to be a lot of oceanic crust that was created in this general vicinity. Right along here is going to be a plate boundary, right, because that's where 
continental crust is colliding. We're going to have a whole weird thing here where these sort of came together. And then maybe you just got to sort of imagine where it would have moved apart. So if these moved like this, we probably have one right along the center here. This one moved like this. So if this moved like this and this moved like this, there could be one kind of coming apart there. See if these kind of moved like this. We can connect that to there. And these can't be in the same one, right? So we need to divide these somehow. Um, let's see, if these would have moved like this, they might have... Hmm. There we go. Like that, to start. Once you get near the edges, they have to kind of connect on the side, so I'm not going to go all the way to the edges quite yet. So this coast, right? So this piece would have moved like this. There really isn't any room there for new crust to be created along here. So this is going to actually be right along the edge. This too is going to have moved like this, so it's going to be right along the edge. This part won't matter because it all kind of went around and hit the bottom, so we won't have to worry about the edges of this one. This one also will, let's see, could have some here, but probably not so much over here. We'll combine that there. We'll do something like that. And again, this might not be like perfectly accurate, but the way this is going to come up in the map, it's not that important. Okay, so then we have to think about what's not connected to these, right? So I have this big chunk up here, which that could be one plate, right? And then let's see if this is right now, these are the same ones and we don't want them to be the same. So we're probably going to want to do, and I like to do this just when it makes it easier, do it right along the bottom there. So then, right, like, you know. And then these two sides can be their own plates. So this would be the same one that's been kind of pushed into. These plate boundaries, which are going to bring the green back out again, we sort of know the direction that these are going already. So I'm going to kind of add those back in, just where they're moved in relation to, I guess, the core of the planet, um, just like roughly. Okay, so this one is going to mostly stay the same, the ones that we don't have things moving on, they're just going to be the same. So these two are obviously moving apart from each other, pretty straight. So these are going to be moving, is this right? Yeah, so this one is moving into this plate right here, but this one is not really moving that much in relation to this. So this one is kind of moving into that one. So we'll see. some of that. Um, and you don't need um, boundaries on every single bit of this. It's not going to be super relevant. Um, these might have a little bit of transform here, depending on how fast they're moving, right? If this one has mostly gone like this, and this one is kind of moving more to the side, maybe transform, eh, who knows. This one is spinning. So what we're probably going to see is this coming apart here but coming together maybe over here a little bit. Just a little bit, which would normally create, let's see. Let's see, this one's moving this way, this one might be moving this way. A little bit of a transform here in the middle. And this might be confusing, but if you think about it, if this one's mostly staying the same and this one's going like this, 
even though this plate is moving in this direction, it's still going to be pushing against this crust and that plate's going to be kind of going underneath as it moves up, right? So we'll have a convergence boundary there and I think we'll kind of leave it at that. I think that's complicated enough for right now. All right, so we're adding in our divergent boundaries. It's going to include one here. We will do convergent in pink. Maybe gray for transform. And I think I will just make this a little bit nicer real quick. All right. So that is going to be my updated map there, which I have all of my boundaries in. All right, so now that we have these boundaries and directions mapped, we can sort of expand. Um, and not all of these boundaries are going to be as severe at certain points as others, and they're not all going to have uh, significant features that you're going to be able to see on the global scale as a result of these. Transform boundaries in particular aren't going to have much here because mostly that's going to cause things like earthquakes and maybe rift valleys. I'm going to put up a little graphic of all the features as I sort of go through and add these. So at convergent continental continental boundaries, you're going to see some pretty significant mountain ranges, especially at ones where these plates are going to be moving together a lot and for a long period of time. This is how you get things like the Himalayan mountains. When it's continental and continental crust, you're not going to see much subduction. So there's not going to be a lot of loss of crust that's going back down into the mantle. So these are going to be pretty severe, especially in comparison to oceanic continental mountain ranges. For oceanic continental convergent boundaries, um, you're going to see some amount of subduction here as the oceanic crust is going underneath of the continental crust. And you can sort of decide whether or not you want this to be a sort of steeper angle of subduction or a more shallow angle of subduction. If it's steep, the mountain ranges are going to be narrow and closer to the coast. And if it's more shallow, the mountains are going to be a bit wider and further from the coast. At convergent oceanic oceanic boundaries, the main thing that you're going to see along some of these in the most severe air, severe areas are going to be volcanic island chains. Um, there's going to be a lot of other stuff underneath of the surface, but that really doesn't matter for the sake of this uh, world building video. For divergent oceanic boundaries, we're not really going to worry about those. At divergent continental boundaries, you're mainly going to get a rift valley here. An example of this is the East African Rift Zone. In general, along divergent boundaries, whether or not it's oceanic, um, continental, oceanic, continental, you're going to see rift volcanoes. And again, for transform boundaries, we're not really going to worry about those. Um, doesn't really impact this. So if we're expanding the map now, we basically need to look at all of these different boundaries and how they're going to impact the land. We've already done the major mountain, range, mountain ranges. Let's see. If these are pushing it along here, you're going to expect to see a little bit of extra mountain range along here, right? You're going to expect to see some good mountain ranges along here. Probably a little bit along here, but not so much because right here is where that main pushes. So that um, boundary is more severe there. Uh, we're going to see some over here. Um, honestly, since this is the main part, we're going to kind of add some, maybe some islands here. So then where we do have convergence in the middle of the ocean, which is mainly going to be around here, we'll add a little bit of volcanic islands. Okay, divergent boundaries. I mean, that's, we don't have any inland. 
I think it'd be interesting to add one, but we won't worry about it. But you'd get some volcanoes along here, maybe. Alright, so here we are probably going to see a linear fault value valley. I'm not going to add that yet. But, okay. Yeah, I think that's pretty good for mountains. Maybe a little bit along here. It's like a little bit. Those are definitely going to be moving pretty far, so... Actually, you know what? This would probably be a pretty major one. Just all along there. Alright, one more thing that we want to add here, and this is... This may seem a little weird and not super impactful, but these are actually really fun and will add a lot of character to your map, and these are hotspots. Alright, so underneath of the crust we have the mantle, which is sort of a more uh, fluid material that sort of is constantly moving around. There's like convection and s convection cells in there, and it, it more complicated than we need. But in certain areas underneath of the crust and the mantle, you're going to have hot spots or mantle plumes. These are, for the most part, stationary. So they're in one spot that's very hot, and the crusts are moving around on top of them. At the spots where the crust is over these hot spots, the crust is going to melt and you're going to get volcanoes. But again, you're going to have the crust moving. So the places where this is kind of melting up through the crust is going to move as the oceanic crust of a plate um, moves over these hot spots, you're going to see volcanic island chains or like sea mounds. But for the most part, only the newest ones are going to be active and are going to be the largest. Another thing to note about these, not that it matters for the sake of our maps, but the volcanoes that are at these sort of hot spot island rings won't be as explosive as ones that are due to subducting crust. Because again, you're having, in a subduction zone, right, you're having entire chunks of crust just constantly going under into the melt mantle, um, melting to an extent and coming back up. Whereas here, you just have a hot spot just kind of melting one little bit at the bottom there of the crust that is coming up. When hotspots occur under continental crust, you still get sort of the same feature. In America, the Yellowstone caldera is over a hotspot, and you can see a chain of calderas stretching from the southwest, where the North American plate used to be over the hotspot. On Earth, I think we have about 45 of these hotspots, but only maybe a dozen of them are major enough to create volcanoes at the scale that we care about here. So we are going to designate maybe six to eight hot spots on our map that are away from other boundaries. So where you have marked these hot spot areas, if it's oceanic crust, you will have a chain of islands kind of moving with the direction the plate is moving. If your hot spot's here, right, and the plate is moving this way, you're going to expect that chain of islands to go this way as well, because this pot of the pot, this spot of the plate used to be here, right? where, so it's sort of going to go towards the direction that the plates are moving, but get less severe as you go, right? So you might have one island and then a couple littler ones moving in that same direction. It could be an arc if the plate is rotating or a straight line if it's not. And if this is continental crust, you're going to have a little volcanic mountain. So you'll just have a little like mountain on your map. And then again, whichever direction the plate's moving, if it's moving this way, you'll have a couple smaller mountains like calderas moving in that same direction. Alright, so now I want to add some hot spots. I'm going to use red. And again, we're adding around four to eight of these away from other plate boundaries. I'm just going to close my eyes and touch somewhere random, see if it works. Okay, so now we have those hot spots. So, let's see, so this plate, let me grab this again, alright, so this one is moving like this. So basically, I'm going to see an island here, and then maybe like this. Like that. Alright, so there are our hotspots. I'm pretty happy with how this looks. I think it's going to be kind of fun and interesting. We have 
a continent that kind of is, you know, has some equatorial areas. We have some areas that are more in the polar and subpolar regions. Like, there's a good diversity of areas so that we'll get to hopefully have a lot of different climate areas in here. Um, and the oceans aren't too complicated, so it'll be pretty easy to do ocean circulation here. So, pretty happy with this map. So at this point, we have our rough land masses. We have islands, volcanoes, hotspots, mountains. In the next step, we're going to be finalizing our map by looking at large-scale erosion and glaciation, and then creating the physiographic regions on our map. So which areas are lowland plains, or mountains, or glaciers, etc. And that'll all set us up for the next stage, which will be creating our elevation maps. Keep an eye out for the next video, and if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put those below. And if you like these videos and want to continue seeing these series and want me to, to prioritize making these videos, give it a like, comment below, let me know. But I will see you in the next one.